What's happening? So, picking up where we left off last week. Gonna, uh, just flesh out this dude a little bit more. See if I can't get him to a nice place. Maybe throw some accessories on him. Finish up the bust. Do some high resolution detail. And, uh, that'll be that. What's up, Ferex? How you doing? Okay, let's get some symmetry on. Let's turn all that off. Sculpt the perspective on. It's a better when looking at human faces. <clears throat> Look at some old guy, old guy eyebrows here. I forgot to shuffle these tracks. Nice, what are you working on, Ferex? Okay, pardon me. I'm 
to keep duplicates of the eyes just in case I blow it. Um, One of the things I've been doing a lot lately is, uh, what's up, Pixel Rabbit? How you doing? I am repeating. What does that mean? What do you mean, Pixel Rabbit? Am I, is my mic coming in echo? Shouldn't be, but let me know. But one thing I like to do is I like to add, um, for all the extra pieces, like whenever I duplicate something off, but I might want to keep it around later, I create a start group for the from the Boolean system, you do like a start group there, and uh, that allows me to sort of just like hide and then hide them all in one fell swoop, like it's just a nice way for me to have like any extra pieces I might want to go back to, or like just sketch geo that I want to go grab, um, I keep it on that little, that very bottom um, Boolean group. That way I can just, you know, grab them, see them, p put things down there, send things to the bottom and just turn them off. It's just a, it's a nice way to like, kind of have like pseudo Photoshop groups without actually having them. in there. Probably gonna regret doing that. Actually, it's a little bit early. Like I know I want to. I have some things to figure out on the eyes first, and I just know that um, it's gonna be a bit too early. But I wanted to kind of have them there. Get some visibility.
and usually you don't want to have symmetry on when you're doing like details the way I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of lining up where the details are going to be. Um, and then I'll take symmetry off when I start. If you want to do like you know, high frequency wrinkles, things like that, um, you know, you don't want to have symmetry on because it's not realistic and even the layperson will call that out in a, in a split second. It won't be something you can get away with. Right now I'm just trying to find some f like basic like geometry flow and wrinkle patterns that I think will work and find out if they're not going to work, find out why. And so I'm just trying to do some of that right now. Uh, I don't really use the place in maps in ZBrush, Uther, sorry. Um, I know they live down here. And I know that you can bake them. Um, that's about it. I don't really know much about the place displacement maps. I tend to do everything for video games. So like displacement maps, they get really expensive in video games really fast. So as a real-time render displays and maps, um, you know, you're better off using things like height maps and building information into your shader, and, you know, a proper displacement map where you're actually, like, popping geometry off the surface. Um, I just haven't seen many uses for it in, in the video game art that I've been working on. Um, that isn't to say there aren't uses for them, it's just that it's just not something that's part of my workflow, really. apply them imported displacement maps and they could get applied in a blurred way texture resolution relative to your document resolution might be a thing there like if you open up the document window um, you know if you have a texture resolution of like 2k 4k um, you know your screen might only be 1980 by 1020 pixels um, you know a lot of times you can uh, you know, half the, you know, this is still the same, you know, this, this is the size of my desktop right here, but I can still zoom out and, and make it tiny, you know, so like what you could do is like, if you have like a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel, like if you have a 4K displacement map, then, um, you know, you would uh, have to have the resolution on your canvas to support that. So that's just kind of, maybe that's causing your problem there. So if you did a new document, that made it like you know made it 40 96 on each size make that big it'll be too big for your screen but then you can zoom out and like put the 4k image like at a reasonable size then you're gonna be working at 4k then when you bring in your displacement map um, that would probably uh, solve your resolution issue there if that's indeed your problem which I'm not sure it is Get back to that 
actual Probably put some pock marks on the chin with the texture. Sculpting that in would be a bad, bad call. It's not gonna look right with, with you know, brush info there. Hey, what's going on, Pixelogic? What's up, Kyle and Kingsley? How you guys doing? Just getting some old man sculpt going.
<laughs> Appreciate it, I hate yous. A good day to yous. Definitely just sculpting behind his mustache right now. Um, but you never know when the facial expression is going to, or the facial hair might change. So it's good to have things make sense behind the scenes, you know, if they're going to be off camera or not rendered, rather. even then if that's correct then it's more likely that I'll get the connection of the nose and the cleft of skin there get that correct is really important just because it's like the main one of the main defined lines cause it's, it's such a severe plane change on the face so like you kind of want to always have that skin meet correctly Noses and ears, man. Cartilage. Great way to introduce character in the character. It's also a great way to get trapped. Kind of want like that, that stumpy nose. That's actually, it's kind of what I'm going for there. So that's good. This wrinkle is distracting. I want to bridge the nose there, but it's like a full wrinkle cut right into it. It's not, not the right way to do that. It's a good pinch brush from the Blizzard artist Z Orb Michael of Vicente, I think his name is. We're doing good, guys. Disc Jam, uh, Disc Jam, we just announced Disc Jam's free weekend today on Steam. So, um, Disc Jam will be free for the next 72 hours. And if anybody opens up their Steam browser in the next two days, they should see Disc Jam there. Let's find out if that's there. Battle Ride Free Weekend. That makes sense. They're a much bigger game than us. Yeah, there it is. Number two on the list. News two of three. Disc Jam is free on Steam this weekend. All these assets were made in ZBrush. God's hands now. Yeah, gotta get to this. Gotta get to this front page. Make it to the front page would be a big day for us.
not bought a game since December. You're graduating this December, and you've got to buy software licenses. Yeah, that's uh, a no joke expense. <laughs> Friggin' software, man. That's where they get you. To be honest, I will say that ZBrush is, uh, for how much I use it in my pipeline, ZBrush is probably like the best deal um, in terms of just like use for cost. Um, you know, other software that I use this frequently and this much, um, significantly more expensive. Toolbag 3 is nice because if you're looking to become an artist, um, professionally of course, uh, you know, as I hire artists, the thing that is the most useful is when they give me, you know, as a game artist, you know, and hiring for that position, when I know they can bake all those maps in Toolbag and they can have a, a, a low poly mesh texture to look high detail, I mean, that's, that's the job, that's the gig, you know, how good can you make yeah, anybody with a million or anybody with unlimited polygons can can do a pretty decent job uh, getting something looking detailed and nice. But if you can, you know, get the detail onto, you know, a mesh that might be only sixty thousand, but it looks like it's really really high detail, um, you know, you're gonna have success finding work in the in the games business. So like Marmoset's great for that because it's a great portfolio showcase and it's just a great engine to kind of learn that workflow because it's really, I mean, most games have that requirement. Like most games, you're authoring shaders to achieve a certain look. Um, so it's not so much that, oh, I know how to make the best sculpt of hair. It's like, well, can you make high res and low res geo that the mesh will look good in a game engine? And like that's, I mean, that's the job. So Marmoset's great for that. If anybody doesn't have Marmoset or can't afford it, you can also just get Unity and Unreal Engine for free and just you know do the workflow that way. I mean, you're essentially just trying to get a game render. Marmoset's a great presentation tool.
And I think most of the wrinkling I'll do in the neck here will be via texture. So it's not super critical that I get all these um, just right. It's just that I kind of want to break up the symmetry, make sure the things I'm going to place texture and look okay. You know, I'm on, I got smooth stronger on, so I like I'll buff it out after I kind of lay down a few strokes where I think it might go. Like this neck should be wrinkly. It's probably a little too wrinkly right now. Um, but again, like, like I'll I can alpha in textures, set more targets, and then drop them back out. Yeah, you know, detailing is kind of a mundane process, so I just won't spend too much time on it here. I just want to, um, like I said, just get an idea of where things will fall on them. What's up, Gary? How you doing? Is ZBrush easier to make character than Blender? Um, you know, it depends. Like, ZBrush can certainly do all the things you would need to make a game resolution character. I mean, you can do the you can do the low resolution retopology stuff as well. Um, it can't do the skinning. It doesn't have like a bone animation pipeline. So I mean, like to get the character done in ZBrush, you know, you still have to go someplace else to handle the um. Um, articulation of the character has to be done in another package. But like as far as getting, I don't know what, what Blender's sculpting tools are like, but ZBrush is in terms of a sculpting package, um, you know, is certainly the best in the market. I mean I've, I've played with uh, the others a little bit and I don't think there's anything even close to ZBrush's league. I don't want to touch those eyes because I know that I'm going to need to come back in there with high resolution details. So I'm going to just leave it now because I want when I subdivide, I want that to like clean up. It's already at 9,000. I think what I'll probably end up doing now. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think I know where my detail is going to go. Um, you know, a lot of this will get cleaned up still. Things are good, Gary. Just uh, knocking out some character bust. A little more, a little detailing. This old, this old dog here. Did I lose all my skin information? Oh, I redynamesh. That's what I do. So instead of poly painting that again, I'll show you guys a little trick here. Oh, Gary, I don't know about that, man. You gotta have, I mean, my pen does not go straight far. I got a little pen holster for it. It's either in my hand or in that holster. That's, unless there's, uh, you know. I have left town without the pen, and that's, that's a rub. Alright, well, alright, so I lost my poly pen information. I'm gonna load the tool back up. Even though I've modeled a bunch of changes on it, I know that I still have all that color. Whoa, look like at battle station up that side. Hold on.
Sorry about that. <clears throat> How about using the Unreal LOD thing for Retopo? Is that a thing? Um, you're talking about like the the Poly. What are those things called? The Sim Simply Gone. Is that what it's called? They have their like internal uh, um, skeletal match like optimization stuff. You know. I have heard of people using Simply Gone outside of Unreal Engine. Like they use that software to like get a low poly base. But the thing with those algorithms is, even though they work for LODs a decent amount, last time I saw them, uh, they weren't great at maintaining edge loops. That could have changed by now. Maintaining edge loops is really key. So if you want to like, the main thing you're going to find is that when you're building your low resolution geometry, is that you really are going to need to have precise control over like basically every vertice on that thing like you know you can get away with some kind of laziness but when it comes time to animate you really there's a lot of places where things can break down things can break down because your bone is three units in the wrong area if it's you know less than five degrees rotated in its base pose you'll find that oh all of a sudden it's deforming so poorly no matter what i do to paint the skin weights it doesn't work there's a lot of things where things can go wrong like your skin weights might be just a little bit off like if you rely on a procedural tool for your entire low poly mesh, you're almost certainly going to have some issue pop up because it's just not going to be as refined as the handcrafted cage that has exactly the edge flow that you want it to have. That being said, can you get away with it? Sure. Um, can you get 90% of the way there with procedural tools? Absolutely. You can get 90% of the way there and then like edit out the rest yourself and get, get the rest of the stuff done yourself. So That's something to think about. What's up, Lance? How you doing? All right, so I lost my—I did a—I did a, a uh, Dynamesh, and I lost all of this poly painting that I did. And so, you know, I could paint it again. It didn't take me very long, but I'd like to get those colors back. I'm happy with like how the veins are popping through. I'm just happy with where, <sighs> excuse me, this one landed. So I'm just gonna start there. Um, I'm gonna append the colored bust, so I have it down there. Hide everything besides that. And this. Go to solo. Now I want to. I want to keep this geometry. Right. So I think the thing I'll probably do. I'm gonna duplicate that off again. This is my geo. So let's call that bust geo. Call this bust paint. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make sure I want to maintain this Geo because I've sculpted on a little bit more. I took his face a little bit farther. I'm going to keep that Geo, but I also, um, I'm going to want to get this paint back on there first. So first thing I want to do is, let's get some good Z remission going. So I want to get it down to a reasonable, reasonable poly count. So I'm going to use the guides here. I'll be a little loose to begin with this on this because I just don't think you're not certain yet how it's all gonna work out, so just wanna do a really quick guide and sometimes that'll get you all the way there, sometimes you need to get more work to do. We have some decent guides for retopology.
Pop on over to ZB Mesher. Get curve strength up to like 95. Need to be super low. If I can get down to like around fifteen thousand, just something that I want to have a lower. I want to be able to go from low to high. Have have lower subdivision levels. I don't need. I don't need a dynamesh anymore because you know the silhouette looks good. The shapes look good. I'm ready to start doing some kind of the higher frequency detail. Clay tubes constant versus clay tubes. I'm not sure. We can take a look at that. Can you export the poly paint? Yeah, you can export the texture. There's a few ways to do it. Um, the one I'm doing right now is just, I'm just going to project it back on. So this came down to 30. You know, that's actually quite fine for my purposes. This isn't going to be a game resolution. This isn't game resolution, of course. Um, but like if I wanted to make some wild changes, 20,000 is clearly enough for me to come in here and do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, I'm not crazy about that little geo there. Looks like that's connected. It is. So I don't like that. It's connected because this is connected. Sure, I'm gonna turn the adaptive size down because I don't want it to. Curve shank super high. I think I can go a little bit lower. Wario64 tweeted the disc jam deal today, huh? Ooh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, as soon as the deal went live, it was nuts. Like all of the, all of the, um, just flooding our Twitter page. That's awesome. Give that a little like. Sixty-seven thousand people. That's awesome. There aren't any of these. I'm sure there's some of these out there somewhere, Gary. I mean, like, I think can't you just get them from uh, Intuos Touch M? I'm not sure which one that is though. Okay, Zero Mesh is done. Still 23,000. Not really respecting the eyes all that much. But overall pretty solid. Now if I subdivide this up. I feel like a project might not go so well. Yes. Hmm. Alright, here's an idea. Let's do I'm gonna project this geo. The proper geo. Let's 
Subdivide, project again. Subdivide, project again. So now look at these two meshes, they're basically identical and uh, one of them is a third of the geometry and it's got subdivision levels on it. So you really can get pretty far with the projection tools. I'll do one more big project of 1 million, 1.5 million. This might take me down for a minute. Intuos Touch M, I can't find anywhere. I've never heard of that. Okay, so this has all the geo I want. It has that full. And that little bit right there, which can go away. All the way down to 20. So now I have a nice subdivided mesh that I can switch between high poly, low poly, and then get really super high. Not high poly, low poly, but like super, super dense uh, sub subdivision levels all the way down to like 20,000 if I want to get more broad stroke with it. But for now, that's pretty solid. Um, now what I'll do is I'll store a morph target. So if I make any edits, I can just grab that morph target again and morph it back to where it was. So. Got my morph target. Now I'm going to project the colored one. with the distances here. I just want to get all this res I just want to get all of this uh, poly paint information. I don't need to go crazy here. projections there. Fill this object with the right material. Fill it with skin shade. That's more than enough resolution right there. Um, so 
So this will be nice. It'll just give me all that poly paint back, which I did last week. I don't want to lose it. Um, fill the object with that material. But of course now it's got the old geometry behind it, right? So that's why you stored the morph target. I stored that morph target off, so now I can just morph it back. I've got all that. I've got all that geo. You make a horror game just by doing that. Slide morph targets on sculpt layers back and forth, and boom, horror video game. So I'll, I'll morph it back to 100. Now that's the exact geo that I wanted there. Has that exact geo but also got the poly paint information from this other one. So now I can get rid of the poly paint from last week. I can get rid of this high resolution geo from this morning. And now I've got a poly painted with subdivisions all the way down to 20,000 polys um, bust. So I'm back in business now, I got everything that I need. Probably time to throw some pupils on the eyes and start giving a little bit of character to the hair. Um, oh, I see. Well, isn't that pen? That pen just looks like a regular Wacom pen, though. Is that pen not just fit in the regular Wacom stands? I know they sell those. Someone had a question about, okay. Clay tubes versus clay tubes constant. Where is the clay tubes constant brush? Is it in like, is it in light box? Under clay, I'm guessing. Clay tubes line, clay tubes. I don't even know where clay tubes constant is. So if you want to show me where I can find that brush, I'll, uh, I'll take a peek at it. Clay tubes line brush. Oh, it's one of these brushes. Yeah, these are good. I like these. Well, I'm here. Let me save all this. Let me delete all to get that other bust out of there. Keep clean workspace and press nine. Save project file. So, let's paint these eyes. Let's also rename this polygroup eyes. Grab my standard RGB brush. Let's go like 90% black. Toy plastic, make it a little gray actually. What's going on? How you doing? Not easy to learn. Make this line. 
Okay, talk a little about how to make these lines around the eyes and mouth. Sure. Um, that's just the ZV Mesher guides. I have them on my I have them on my bar here, but also you can do B brush guide, Z, and Z Mesher guides. That's what those are right there. And what they do is they work through the curved brush system the same way that uh, any other curved brush would do. Um, if I wanted to do a line around the neck, for example, I could just drag it off, hold shift, and then it'll automatically try and like walk the path and make that line. It's easy to, it's less, it doesn't do such a good job with organic shapes. Um, it does a better job with geometric shapes. There you go, that's a good one. See that? So like now it went all the way across. There's a line there. And what I'll basically do is if I want to do a Z remesh, I want to guarantee there'll be edge flow there. Turn off adapt. Make it like 5,000. Um, and I got the, uh, I got to add this to my window there. But you get the curve strength to like respect the curve strength, right? You do a Z remesh. It'll take a minute here. You see what happened there, Eduardo? Um, gave me a lot of really good geo there. Um, I didn't even bother with the, the mouth, but I did the mouth well. Um, even did the eyes pretty well. Um, this part of the eye would break down when I started sculpting it more, but you know, as far as getting you along a lot of the way there, and this only is 4,000 tries, and a lot of the tries are wasted in this. Like you could, you could delete all those and do those a lot cleaner or a lot more spread out. In terms of the face, though, um, you know, you now I've got nice, uh, nice edge flow here. These edges, no, don't crash. That's a bummer because I really, actually, I, was, I really like this. Um, I liked how this zero mesh came out. It's only five thousand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to this. We're gonna, we're gonna do that again. Uh, off that goes. Let's see if I can get that back. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Now I'm opening up Substance Painter. Everything's going. Everything's going awry. Give me a sec here, guys. Let me get my desktop back to back to business.
I got two muting mechanisms for my mic, and occasionally I'll hit one, not the other. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I got the mesh back. It was, it was luckily the recovered file got saved. Um, but Eduardo, yes, yeah, so basically what what that line did was make sure that you have an edge loop all the way around right here. Um, you know, so that's the key is that you can maintain the edge flow that way without building cycles. Looks like it had a cycle right there though. Yeah, actually, it didn't maintain that edge edge flow. It has a cycle. I don't like cycles. That's how you get. Uh, that's how you get. How the hell did that even connect? What? What does that have to do with that? Oh, I see. It's not symmetrical. That's why. Anyway. So, let's do a little tinkering around here with uh, ZB Mesher because I think it's worth doing. Um, let's go back to where I was. Put that there. Actually, don't even want that one. Put my ZB Mesher guides back. Close that one out. This is going to be the key is getting the eyes to just have a decent amount. Just circular edge flow. One of our fellow instructors here, um, Danny Mack, has a probably the best retopology tutorial I've seen on retopologizing the heads. How to get good edge flow in just a tiny amount of polygons. Like he does it in such a efficient manner. Um, it's really worth checking out. Bookmark that, and I use it anytime I need to go back into the place where I'm. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, I'm gonna try to do a whole reprojection again. Let's duplicate that off um, so I can reproject it. Now let's bring out. First of all, let me go to Preferences, Config, Enable Customize, then shoot on over to Geometry, Z Remesher, Curve Strength. I'm gonna want that here because I find myself needing it enough that. It didn't quite make it into my um, default UI, but I use it enough now that it's like, yeah, just stay over there. Preferences, enable customize. This is store config. Preferences, save UI. I'm just saving this off because I'm going to need it. Interface layouts, TMR. 1440. Just saved it off, so now when I refresh my UI, of course, of course not. take. Let's try that again. Config. Enable customize. Geometry. Zero measure. Curve strength. Oh, it's there. Am I just blind and silly? No. It's going away. user interface layout. Yeah, that's what's happening. CFG, BAK. It's finding my old one because I didn't name it properly. Now we're good. What's up, Ashley? How you doing? 
How to position the lines to get an edge loop? Do you make circles around the eye and after cross two lines, how much ZBrush understand this lines one the top of the mesh? I made this image. Yeah, Edward, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, you just, I mean, I mean, you just draw it by hand. I mean, like, that's basically how I want it to bisect, basically. That's just all I know, you know, like, because I want, that's where I want these other polys to come from. But you don't really, that, I mean, I'm not retopologizing right now. Like, there's a topology brush that does that. Oops, cancel, cancel. If I wanted to retopologize something with the topology brush here, you know, you draw out your polys and then it automatically makes them for you. I did that a little bit too fast so it didn't catch. But you know, you get the picture. Like, that's the topology brush. Let's see. And you tap it. And now you got your new geo. Let's see? And that's how you would create topology with that brush. You can also decide if you want thickness on it or not. But anyway, that's that step. Um, yeah, but as I was saying, so like what we're trying to do here, get these zero meshers going, these guides going. Just customize my user interface. I hit refresh, it should be there. Curve strength's there. Preferences, config, no longer customize, UI saved, config is stored. Alright, we're all set here. Got the things dropped down. So curve strength is high, adaptive size, I've turned adaptive off. I think I wanted it down to about five last time. Let's see what this does for. I think this will get us pretty close, but there'll probably be some artifacts, but we'll see what it does. Yeah, Ashley, you mentioned yesterday that uh, you're kind of cruising today at the office, which is nice. Did you end up staying up pretty late finishing that uh, shark, stylized shark dude? If anybody hasn't seen the Ashley's stream from yesterday, um, go to the ZBrush channel and check it out. She's this really rad little dude. So yeah, they kind of fought it a little bit. Wasn't able to quite get curves around the eyes you wanted. Did a good job with the mouth though. Curve strength 100. Let's get super aggressive. Yeah Gary, with the uh, topology brush, um, you can draw down curve lines and detect any, it'll detect any um, connecting three or four sided planes you can draw you can do retopology that way it's pretty effective um, it's fast works better on some geo than others um, but it's a pretty effective uh, way of going about things whoa what in the world happened here that's amazing back that off a little bit. I think a hundred makes it go. Just bananas. I think if I were to guess I'd wager doing all those splits is too much for it. Just gonna take these splits off the eye. I don't think I'm getting anything with them. And another thing you can do is you can let's do some of this. Um, I can poly paint where I think. Uh, You can paint where you want there to be um, resolution, I believe. Oh, that's for the UV master, I think. Yeah, sorry, that's UVs, duh. I thought there was a way to paint density, though. Is there not?
That's matter just finding. Man, that one that I, the one that I made on the other, uh, when I crashed, I actually turned out the greatest. And it's funny because it's just a matter of just like a few different settings. It didn't really change that much there. I'll actually open it up and see what I did. This one's probably struggling because it's giving too much respect to the curves. There we go. Still 9,000 though. Pretty solid. I mean, take it down to nine seven. Yeah, nine's good. Four is too little. It's too few. That's just about right, though. messing with some of these uh, parameters here. There we go. To increase the distance here. All right. Also, it's totally symmetrical on the Z rematch, which is nice. So let's save this. I want to just take a look at the other one that I got out of that demonstration one. Recovered document, recovered project. This guy is only 4,700. Came out pretty good. Let's say bust low. Yeah, I used to keep up with like every streamer that we had, Gary, but then like it just became too much. So now I just I flew on I throw on Ashley stream when I'm at the office and that's uh it's nice to have I will throw that's I'll watch that stream every week while I'm working. Like on cloud. Characters. I'll go back to my other project. That I just saved. And I'll load in. There we go. Now append that blue one. Throw this at the top. Wow, I mean, it really did a solid job. There's some issues in the eyes. But it even did a better job, I think. I mean, for how much lower it is, it's half as many polygons, and it did a great job. I can't imagine what I did so differently. All the settings were the same. I think I'm going to need the extra G on the eyes, though. And 9,000 is, is pretty nugget. It's pretty negligible. I think I'll probably take this higher poly one. Yeah, those eyeballs have had trouble. They're a little too low. But wow, came out pretty good. Right, 
turn that off, I'll throw it at the bottom. So I won't throw it away, but I'll put it in my little dummy folder here. So now like all the things that are just kind of like extra geo that I might want to go back to. I think those are useful, but not necessarily known what, what I'll use them for yet. Or this is what that's great for. All right, subdivide it again. Let's project that back. Subdivide and project. Yeah, so this one's 1 1.5, this one's less than half that. Has exactly the same amount of detail, really. So still pretty, still a little rough here. So I probably want it when I subdivide it again. I'll be able to All right, Ferrix, thanks for stopping by, man. Take it easy. Is it a good idea to do zebra measure the function, use poly paint? And yeah, that's what you want to do. It's a new or something like that. You basically want to. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Use poly paint, and then you'll paint. You know, I would paint blue all around his chest, red around his eyes, red around his mouth, and uh, that's that's exactly what you want to do. But again, I'm gonna retopo. All, I'm gonna get all retopo by hand on this, so they, you know it's less important that I do all that. This part of the ear tends to pop out a little.
also think I want to see what this dude looks like with just like an absurd leather head on. So I think we're going to definitely do that. So to do that, I'm going to append the Sphere 3D. Good time to use a new deformer tool. Tools. Let's do it with some. It's gonna be like six.
Uh, yeah, for sure. I, uh, I threw it on my Gumroad. I got that request a lot, so I put a, the UI on my Gumroad. Um, that's just the 1080p one. I'm gonna be adding. This is the 1441. It's got. I got a new 1440 monitor, and so this is the one for that config. But I can. I'll, I'll be adding this to. I'll just add it to that share. Um, I've just been like finalizing a few things um, on this current UI. No problem. You know, I think I'll probably leave it as usual. Well Let me see if we match this now. Don't adapt. It probably counts like none. Game art I've been kind of tinkering with for a long time, but I've only actually done it professionally for a couple years now. Um, I was basically doing programming for, I was a video game engineer for the majority of my career. Um, imagery of leatherhead helmets. Than you expect. Yeah, there's one. So yeah, I've been kind of a hobbyist practicing um, for a long time, but professionally I've only been doing it for a couple years. Um, but I've been, you know, trying to get to the point where I could do it professionally for a while. Um, yeah, I doubt, like, I don't have a portfolio, for example, that would, like, get me hired in the games business. Um, but, you know, me and my partner Jay started our own company, and, you know, we felt pretty comfortable that we'd be able to handle the art and engineering entirely in-house. So, that's kind of basically just, you know, bet on myself a little bit and you know so far so good They're smooth That's awesome. Um, well, yeah, I think, you know, you'll just the way that there's. When I started learning this stuff, there wasn't really a lot of uh, opportunity to digest workflow from professionals. Um, you know, of course, in the last like 10 years or so, um, and professionals are sharing their workflows all over the internet, and it's like the best thing in the world for video game art and just art in general. Um, you know, 2D concepts, there's amazing painters out there sharing their workflow. 3D artists are all sharing their workflow. I mean, like, the advent of live streaming workflows is, uh, you know, all pretty recent. So, I mean, I can pretty much guarantee by the time you graduate school, you know, you'll be far more equipped than I to, you know, succeed in, in the art side of things in the games industry.
All right, the little leather head works kind of. Eyebrows are kind of getting in the way there. Let me bring it forward a little bit. get back to a little bit of painting here. I want to get um, I want to get his flesh kind of sorted out a little bit better. Yeah, I wanted to finish his eyes too. Sorry, let me get a little distracted here. Maybe it's this awful song that's contributing. Here with eyes, I just kind of want to layer information in. Um, you know, it's obviously be a little too aggressive how blue I'm going with this, but I like to, you know, paint base information and then just paint above it, knock it back, paint above it, knock it back, paint above it, knock it back. This is a placeholder too, because we, we have an eyeball shader in our game engine, so um, you know it'll. Uh, this is just kind of a placeholder. I know I kind of wanted to have 
um, gray blue eyes. Uh, yeah, now I'll just kind of paint this back a little bit. Get my soft brush. It's probably a little too soft. spend too much time on it. Just want it to kind of have a little bit, tiny bit of visual interest. They're a little intense now. I think another thing you want to do also have this little um, this little shadow over the top shadow painted in oh, if I keep missing the side there yeah that helps and I'll paint a little bit of red on the side there he said why is that Paul senior are you talking about Paul Gaburi senior that's what you're asking about it definitely could be
Oh, American Chopper. Uh, sorry, I don't really know that show. Okay, I got my skin shader here. Or skin brush, rather. Get some of this nice orangey flesh out of there. some of that detail under the pores. You know, try to come in the places where the skin's a little bit thicker. You know, leave it where it's thinner. But where the thin is kind of thick. Skin is kind of thick. You want to paint away all the see-through parts, all the subsurface scattering painting elements. Just try to have some nice variation there. Still a little pink, so I'm just going to keep kind of add it here a little bit. Characters get a lot more creepier. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Pixels. What, uh. Oh, if you're sending a link of the person, yeah, send it over. Let me see what this guy looks like. I think I know what you're talking about actually, is that dude, American Chopper, oh, I'm thinking of, I keep getting American Chopper confused with, with like Pawn Stars. are a little too pink and I think they also fall off a little bit too much.
Yeah, he's got the. Uh, who's he? What's he? He's got the. Um, what do you call that mushroom mustache? It's not handlebar. It's horseshoe. He's got the horseshoe mustache. Jesus, why do these like, why do so many of these royalty free songs sound like, like bad alarm clocks? <laughs> Steph Skulf, that's uh, you, n yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> uh, good picture. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. All right, let me. Uh, I'm gonna drag out. I'm gonna do drag rect of the sort of veiny alpha. There it is. Let's do like a pinkish red. bring that down anyway. I'm gonna bring the side of the eye down a little bit. Tuck in that part of the eyelid so it's kind of closing a little bit stronger on the outside. Paul Taylor Sr. It looks exactly like this. I don't know about exactly like this guy. 
I mean, you can't throw... I mean, this happened a lot with our other guy. Um, we had another character who... Um, he had a big distinguishing mustache. Um, let's see if I can find him. Yeah, here he is. Uh. There you go. So we made that guy, um, and he, I mean, this dude's got mutton chops. Um, <laughs> That guy, uh, everyone's like, oh, it's just Trevor from GTA. And it's like, man, they don't even look alike. They just have, they both have the same mustache. That's like all it takes people to be like, oh, it's just Trevor from GTA. It's like, dude, give me a break. Alright, I'm gonna dig into this helmet now. I wanna make kind of a goofy looking leather head. And that'll be fun too, because A, like, this is really good base geometry already. Um, like, shoot, like, this is, like, you know, just fine to ship geometry. Um, you know, 400 points, not bad. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to get it high, poly. I'm going to put some paneling on there, and I'm going to basically just get to the point where we have some, like, nice panels for um, the high resolution bake and so I'll make like a, a nice little leather head for him to have um, you know, I kinda wanna bring it up a little bit cause like I want his eyes to kinda show his eyebrows move cause his eyebrows are just a distinguishing feature so I'm gonna pull it up a little bit And of course, these gotta kind of flap out a little bit because that's just the look. I feel like I feel like the leatherhead look is just like a lot of dangly bits. I think I'll probably put the chin strap on here, and then with the chin strap, I'll um, I'll like I'll put it. I'll animate a bone on it so like as he runs, like the chin strap will be kind of dangling. Yeah, that little that little part where it comes out a little bit is all the difference in the world. <clears throat> Excuse me, I want to take a drink of water here.
yeah um so yeah the uh we actually already have a redhead character so um that was one of the ones that uh i actually pictured a red-haired guy for this um I think it fits with like the wavy hair and like the kind of curls of his of his kind of mane there. Um, but you know we only have four characters in the game. He's one of them is already a redhead. If we had you know two fifths of our characters are redheads, I feel like it would be distracting. Like oh was it intentional? Like you know blah blah. blah. I think this guy's just kind of be like Silver Fox. Um, you know like the the white white old guy here is like what I'm picturing for him. Let's see what I want to do here.
This is the nudge brush. This brush just moves, like it keeps the form but moves the topology. And when you're working with this lower topology, it's really quite helpful to just like, you know, line that up. I'm trying to like maintain the fact that like, well, I don't really need to retopologize this shape. Um, this is pretty much all the topology I need right here. So like that's pretty useful. I think having a nice fuzz all over this guy is a good call too though. Probably have to put some planes all over him with a little bit of uh, a little bit of fuzz, some white fuzz. I think it'll be an effective way. I'm gonna sell that skin tone. H-E-L-M-E-T, helmet. Let's duplicate this one.
doing now is basically cutting up the panels I think will make sense for this.
What is the... Hold shift. Yeah. Hold shift. Go control. No. Hold shift. Go with the pen. Oh, it doesn't do it either. Cool. Bobbers, this is uh, ZBrush. Pixelogic. This is the Pixelogic channel, and ZBrush is the software they make. on there.
sided. Auto grips. Earmuffs on the guy. We'll probably tighten up those. These earmuffs are actually a little big. We can tighten them up though. We'll polish these out so they're not so wobbly. here. So let's color all of these. Pretty sure I have a leather mat cap in here somewhere as well. Snapshot there. Let's turn everything off. Good perspective, matte cap gray. Let's brighten it up.
Okay, so we got a little bit farther today. Um, did some detailing and, um, you know, started uh, messing around a little bit with the skin shader, finishing out the face. Tweaked the eyes, get the eyes in a good place. Also broke symmetry so I could start modeling out some more of the detail. Um, you know, detail's pretty time consuming. Um, I think what I'll do next is I'll come through with like some alphas and just start, you know, layering in wrinkles and, and old guy skin all over. But I also want to put some good leather patterns on the on the helmet and start doing some some fun sort of like uh, leathery stitches and, and paneling on that. But yeah, it's coming along here. Uh, I think we'll have to do the hair next too. Having the hair as blobs is going to start getting distracting. Got to start maybe putting in some proper hair. On. But yeah, thanks for coming by, guys. It's uh, That's all my time for the day. Uh, I'll be back on next Thursday. And uh, if you want to check out Disc Jam, it's free this weekend. At discjamgame.com. And you can go to our Steam page. It's free on Steam if you guys want to check out our game. Where the characters I make here end up and you know show up. So thanks for coming by, guys. I will catch you next time.